All right, this lesson is for section 3.5. Uh, we're going to be working with one more linear model today. We're going to answer some questions that I think are kind of difficult sometimes because they're very abstract and conceptual. So the math portion of this problem should be very easy for you since we're just going to be writing equations of lines. The rest of the parts that we have to answer some specific questions, this is a little bit trickier. So uh, make sure you guys have your calculator handy. We're going to do some calculations here. All right, so this candy problem says that your favorite candy store, you can buy 30 ounce bags of a certain kind of candy for $1.83 and 20 ounce bags for $1.57. And then it says here, assume that the cost of the candy varies linearly with the number of ounces. So right away we should recognize that this, the cost of the candy, is going to represent our y variable. The number of ounces will represent our x. So this is something you should be very comfortable with now that we've gone over the vocabulary. So let's define our variables. I'm going to say x is the number of ounces of candy and y is the price or the cost of the candy. Now to set up our ordered pairs we want to look at um, again x comma y so we want to make sure that uh, the number of ounces of candy comes before our price. So if we match up 30 that'll go with $1.83 and 20 ounces should match up with $1.57. All right, now that we have our two um, ordered pairs, we can actually write an equation between these two points. So for point slope form, all we need to find is our slope first. So for our slope, let's do $1.83 over 30. I'm just stacking the points. I just like using this method because I know I'm not going to mess up. So uh, this should give me 26 cents on the top over 10 ounces on the bottom. I want to make sure that I actually write this as a decimal, so 0.26 divided by 10 should give me 0.026. So make sure that you're writing your slope, not in terms of a fraction with a decimal inside of it. Make sure you're rewriting it as, you know, just a decimal. If it's a decimal, do not write it as a fraction. I think it's easier if you just see it as a decimal. All right, now that we have our slope, we're going to choose one of the points. I'm going to use this point here. It doesn't matter which one you choose because eventually we're going to put this into function form. So remember that function form is when y equals mx plus b, so the y is solved for by, by itself. So um, let's put this into point slope form first so that we can eventually solve and put it into slope intercept form or function form. So this should be y minus $1.83 equals 0.026 times x minus 30. So just be careful that you're making sure that you have your y and your x um, in the appropriate spots. Because if you don't, then you're going to get a very crazy different, different function. So. All right, now we'll distribute. So when I multiply that out, 0 0.026 times 30, I get 0 0.78. Okay, and I'm going to add the 83, $1.83 over to the other side so that I end up with 0 0.026x plus $1.05. Okay, so this is our function. Now we're going to use this function for the rest of our questions. So that's why it's really important we get this part right. All right, now the next question says, you saw a 45-ounce bag that costs $2.49. Is this, is this bag overpriced, typo, or underpriced? So there are actually two ways to go about doing this question. One, you could say, all right, since this gives me 45 ounce bag, right? This is like saying X equals 45. X represents the number of ounces for candy. And over here we have a cost and that's the price. So we could also say that Y equals $2.49. Now this is not, you don't want to put this together as a coordinate because we don't know if this is true. We need to verify, is this actually a point on the line. So what we're going to do is one of two things. We could plug in x equals 45 and solve for the y, or we could solve for the x and plug in 249. So I'm going to do um, what I think is actually easier and just plug in this value for x. So I have y equals 0 0.026 times 45 plus $1.05. And, and I end up with Oops, can't see my calculator. So a dollar seventeen plus a dollar and five. 
which is going to be 222. Okay, so let's take a look at this price here. If we end up with two dollars and twenty-two cents by paying forty-five, sorry, you, you buy forty-five. Sorry, I got so distracted. Okay, so if you buy forty-five ounces worth of candy, you're supposed to only pay two dollars and twenty-two cents. So this bag at two forty-nine is overpriced. Okay, so the bag is overpriced, and you can show, you know, you can give an explanation here because um, the bag should only cost. two dollars and twenty two cents so this would be an explanation that I would want to look for and then you would have work supporting it now of course you could also plug in y equals 249 you would plug that in here for the y and you would end up solving for the x so I think this is a little bit trickier than what we did here because all we had to do is plug in stuff right into our calculator here you actually have to subtract the dollar five and then divide by 0 0.026 but you're gonna get a number that's much over 45 Right? It's going to be larger than 45, which is also going to show you that you're paying too much because at $2.49, you would expect to get you know, x, uh, an x value that's larger than 45. So either way, you're going to get the same answer whether or not you choose to solve for x or solve for y. All right, so part C says, suppose you um, buy a snack-sized bag priced at $1.25. How many ounces of candy would you expect to get? So in this case, Again, I am given um, in the problem, they're not explicitly telling me that y equals $1.25, but I need to make sure that I understand that this is a price, so I can automatically say y equals $1.25. So nowhere in the problem does, do they just come out and say, hey, y equals $1.25. You have to kind of figure that out for yourself. So in this case, we're going to do exactly what I just talked about in part B. Um, we're going to plug in for the y and then solve for the x. Okay. So we're trying to figure out how many ounces of candy, so that means x is something that we're looking for. So when we are given a y and we're looking to find an x, you simply plug in the y and solve for x. So instead of writing this with the y here um, as a variable, now I can replace this with a dollar twenty-five and simply solve for the x by subtracting the dollar five on both sides. So I end up with um, 0 0.20 equals 0.026x. So now I'm going to divide by 0 0.026 and I end up with x equaling 7.692. Okay. Alright, now this is a decimal. Ken keeps going. Now, when I look at this and it asks me how many ounces of candy would I expect to get, you can answer this slightly rounded up at 7.7 .7 ounces because they wouldn't give you eight full ounces and only charge you a dollar twenty five so seven seven point seven ounces is the amount um, of candy that you should expect to get so seven point seven ounces of candy for dollar twenty five that's a reasonable amount that you would pay for seven point seven ounces all right, now here's where we get to kind of the more difficult questions here. It asks for what are the units of slope. So if we go back to slope up here, my slope that I found was 0 0.026x, 0 0.026, right? This is the number that I've been using the whole time, but it had a meaning prior to that, prior to where we divided and found the actual values here. I had a number that represented the change in price over the change in ounces. So when I divided that out, and I have this now over 1, right, this is 0 0.026 over 1, this is still representing the, uh, the price. But this time now, so the change in price, let's just call it price now, the price over 1 ounce. So what this 0 0.026, this is a dollar amount over 1 ounce, this is saying you're paying $0.026, or if you want to adjust this and write this as cents, you're paying in between 2 and 3 cents, so 2.6 cents, okay? For every ounce, additional ounce, I should say, additional ounce of candy. Okay, so you buy one, you know, one piece or one ounce of candy, you pay 2.6 cents for it. You buy two ounces, you pay an additional 2.6 cents. So this slope 
remember you, you, got, you got to go back to your units go back to how you set up y over x and since we made y price and x the number of ounces and then when we solved for our slope we made that we divided out that that original number so anytime you divide out that number and you um, you're going to get a unit rate here this is our unit rate meaning you're paying this this amount per one of whatever you know it is that you're talking about and in this case it's ounces so this slope um, means in the real world that you're paying 2.6 cents for every additional ounce of candy. Okay, so this is a tough skill. All you got to do though is go back to, you know, y over x, figure out what your um, your units are, and then talk about you know in relation to one um, ounce or one unit, so a unit price, and that that's going to basically kind of give you your answer. Okay, last question here before we get to the graph is to find the intercepts and tell what they mean in the real world. Okay, so the x and y intercepts, right? For every x intercept, we know that the y equals zero. And for every y intercept, we know that x equals zero. So that's simply all we have to do here is plug in to find an x intercept. We're going to set our, our function y equals 0 0.026 x um, plus $5, I think that's what it was. We're going to set the y here equal to 0 and then simply solve for this x. So if we do that, we have 0 equals 0.026x plus $1.05. We're going to subtract over that $1.05 and divide out that 0.026. And we get negative 40.38 equals x. So if I were to write this as a coordinate, remember every every intercept I want to make sure that you're writing this as a coordinate, I get negative 40.38 comma zero. All right. Now I'm just finding the intercepts right now. Eventually we're also going to tell what they mean in the real world, and this is really the the hardest skill because you have to interpret your answer. All right. Now for the y-intercept, we know that x is zero. So now I'm simply going to plug in that x now becomes zero. Okay. So Again, I'm just plugging in this zero in for that x in the original function. All right, so I end up with y equals a dollar and five cents. Now, you might be asking, why didn't I just say, okay, it's a y-intercept, so in our function, that would represent this number here. Well, of course, you could do that too. So I'm just showing you kind of the, the algebraic meaning behind it. You're actually plugging in x equals zero when you're finding that y-intercept. Okay, so we have two points here. Okay, negative 40.38 comma 0 and 0 comma 1.05. So let's interpret these meanings. Now, if I look at my first point here, this x-intercept, this is saying that if I were to get negative 40.38 ounces of candy, right, this is the unit on there, if I get that many ounces of candy, I pay $0. Okay, so hopefully you're thinking to yourself, this makes absolutely no sense because it has no context in the real world. In this case, you're never going to go, you're never going to get negative ounces of candy, that's one that's not possible, and also you're not going to go to a store to pay zero dollars. So this has no real world meaning, and when we graph that you're going to kind of see why it's not really belonging in um, this problem, this particular coordinate here doesn't really belong in context to this problem. You're going to see it easy, easily when we graph this. Okay, now for the y-intercept, this time we have a zero here for the ounces. So we have, um, when I buy zero ounces of candy, I spend this amount, a dollar eighty or dollar oh five, dollar and five cents. Now, you might think to yourself that this makes no sense, but actually, um, this is probably the cost that you would pay, you know, for the packaging maybe of the candy. This is a base price that you're only going to pay a one-time fee of, and then you're going to pay per, you know, ounce of candy that you purchase after that, the 2.6 cents per ounce. So, this does have context to a real world, and I would say that for this, this is the price you pay for packaging. So, of course, nobody's going to buy zero ounces of candy. They're not going to go to a store, spend a dollar and five cents, and walk away with no candy. So instead of interpreting it um, strictly from, you know, its X and Y meaning with the units, 
you're going to say instead that the price you pay is for packaging, it's a one-time fee, any of those kind of things would be absolutely okay. So you're going to have to interpret it based on the context of the problem. So sometimes it might be, you know, um, I don't know, you're buying the donut problem that was the box. Um, if it's um, a car rental, it might be just the, the fee to rent a car. Um, so there's lots of different different meanings that you're going to have to know based off of the, the problem. So you can kind of make up, this is where you kind of have, you can use your imagination just to make up something, but make sure you're not saying it's tax. Make sure you're also not saying like, I'm buying zero ounces of candy to spend a dollar and five cents, because again, that doesn't make sense in the real world. All right, for the last part, to sketch a graph of this linear function, I would like you guys to try this, knowing what we did today in class, you know, make your ordered pairs, start with your ordered pairs. We found a lot of them. I think we've got at least four or five um, within this problem already. Um, make your scale, and then go ahead and plot your function, and then tomorrow in class we'll just verify that you did it okay. You could also check with the key, okay? This is the end of lesson for more linear models. Good job.